Oh my goodness. You surprised me. I didn't expect to see you there. Hey, that makes me think about today's lesson. Are, are you, do you guys like surprises? Do you like it when you get surprises? Some of them yes, some of them no. You know, you like it when you get the surprise of a, a, of a present and you don't know what it is and you open it. It's like your favorite thing. You love those surprises. Or maybe uh, your family is one time throwing you a surprise birthday party that you didn't know was happening. And then all of a sudden you get there and there's a party for you. You know, I remember when I was turning six years old, uh, I was really sick on my birthday. Uh, so my parents had to cancel everything. They had to cancel the party and all that kind of stuff. And I couldn't have a birthday party. Well, about a week later, uh, they took me to McDonald's because I loved going to McDonald's back then. And when we got there, all my friends were there and they had thrown me a surprise party. And that, that shocked me with all my friends showing up, giving me presents. And I was so surprised, yet I was so happy. That's a good surprise. I love surprises like that. You know, our story today has to do with Jesus telling a, a special message. And he taught in such a way, and he taught things in such a way, that people were surprised what he had to say. And they were shocked uh, what he taught about loving enemies, loving one another, uh, about being poor in spirit, that they were blessed and all this kind of stuff. And so we're going to uh, learn about that great message today. Uh, as we get ready to start, uh, we're going to sing first, but let me pray for us. Jesus, thank you so much for the Bible. Uh, thank you so much for your word that you teach us so much about you, how we can love people and how we can love you and how we can share the good news of Jesus to, to everybody. God, pray now as we get ready to sing that we can sing loud and uh, glorify you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you in a little bit. Jesus, you are. 
Good morning again, boys and girls. I, this is Mrs. Hill, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. I can't wait till I get to see you in person. Won't that be great once we can do that? I'm really missing you, I will tell you that. But we're going to start, we're, we're going to keep working on our new verse for this month, for the month of September. <clears throat> So our verse today, do you remember? Is it in the Old Testament or the New Testament? You remember, maybe I can give you a clue. Okay, here's the front of my Bible, and it's kind of toward the front, which means the verse is in the Old Testament. It's found in Jeremiah. And last week I told you Jeremiah was a prophet. He was a prophet, so he got to share God's words with the people of Israel. And so anyway, Jeremiah has this great verse that was for the people to really encourage them. And it can encourage us today too, because God's words are always true from way back thousands of years ago. And even today, isn't that amazing? Our God never changes. He is always the same. Well, our verse that we're gonna keep on working on is in Jeremiah, like I said, it's Jeremiah 33, 3. That's pretty easy. Maybe we could just do like this. 30, 33, 3, right? Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you. Okay, let's look at that. Who is the me? I've got a capital M on that me. You know, when you know, when you learn your capital letters and your small letters, there's a capital M because that person is really important. That's why we have a capital M on his name. Do you remember who that is? Who says call to me? God does. And he's, we can call to him every time we pray. We can pray just in our hearts and he hears it. Did you know that? If you think about telling God something and you just think it in your heart, guess what? He hears that because he knows everything about you, even your thoughts. Isn't that amazing? Well, here's how it goes. Call to me and I will answer you. I will answer every one of you, God says. Sometimes it might not be the answer you want to hear, but he gives you an answer. We'll talk about that in a minute. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty, oh, there's my arm, mighty things you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 3. That's great. Good job, boys and girls. One thing I wanted to tell you is sometimes, does God always say yes to our prayers? Does he always say, oh, yes, you can have that new bike. I'll send it tomorrow. No. Oh, yeah. If you want to be an only child because you don't, because your brothers and sisters, you're, you're just frustrated with them. No, that's not going to happen. Those are silly things that we pray. And those aren't praying in God's will. But you know what? When we pray and say, God, help me to love my brother and sister more. Help me to treat them better than I treat myself. Those are the prayers that God loves to answer. And he says, yes, I will help you. He always says, yes, I will help you with those things. So, but sometimes he doesn't answer our prayers when we're not asking for the right things. And we'll talk about that more next week. Okay, let's say our verse again. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah 33, 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you, God says, and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 3. Okay, we're going to add motions right now. Here we go. Here we go. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me, me, meaning God. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty, strong things you do not know. Where is it found? Jeremiah 33, 
three. Good job, let's do the motions one more time. Okay, Jeremiah 33, three. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty. Can you do your arm like this? Mighty, I'm kind of silly looking when I do that. Mighty things you do not know. Jeremiah 33, three. Okay, one more time to get it down. Here we go. Jeremiah 33, three. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Jeremiah 33, three. Well done, guys. Give yourselves a hand and give yourselves a pat on the back. Good job. See you next time. Great crowds of people followed Jesus wherever he went. One day, Jesus went up on a mountain. He sat down and began to teach about the kingdom of God. First, Jesus taught about the blessings that come to those who follow him. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Then Jesus taught how believers should live. Jesus said that believers are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see the good things you do and choose to praise God. Then Jesus taught about God's law. Jesus did not come to get rid of the law, but to obey it perfectly. He said that to enter heaven, a person can't just look righteous on the outside like the righteous leaders. A person must be righteous on the inside too, obeying God for the right reasons. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for them. When you give to people who are poor, give in secret. And when you pray, don't pray just so that people will hear you. Jesus taught the people how to pray. He also said, forgive others. If you forgive those who sin against you, God will forgive you too. But if you don't forgive them, God will not forgive you. Jesus said, do not collect treasures on earth. They can be destroyed or, or stolen. Collect treasures in heaven instead. For where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. He taught that God provides for his people. Jesus taught the people many things. When he finished teaching, the crowds were amazed because he taught them like one who had authority. Jesus taught people what it means to follow him. He taught how people should live, how they should treat one another, and how to love God. People who trust in Jesus live to honor God and show what his kingdom is like.
Welcome back, boys and girls. Uh, what a great story about what is known as the greatest teaching of all time, the greatest sermon that Jesus ever gave, gave the Sermon on the Mount. Now, let me ask you this. Of all the stuff that they mentioned on the video and all the stuff you read in the Bible uh, in Matthew uh, 5 through 7, uh, which one surprised you the most? You can pause and tell somebody uh, next to you, um, or you can pause and whisper to yourself. You see, for me, it was when Jesus said, uh, love your enemies and pray for them. Love your enemies and pray for them. Because I don't know about you guys, when I think about people who tend to be my enemies, um, they tend to be mean to me. They tend to do things I don't like. And I don't want to pray for them. In fact, many times I want to get revenge and all that kind of stuff. But Jesus tells us we need to pray for them and not get revenge. We need to love them and show them kind things. That can be hard at times, can't it? Well, I hope you guys have had a, uh, will have a good week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Talk to you later.